Okay, hi, so in this video we're going to talk about the lungs. So we're going to talk a little bit about the lung structure, we're going to have a look at a diagram of course, and then we're going to have a look more specifically at gas exchange in the lungs, right? That occurs in something called the alveoli, uh, which we've actually seen in B1, okay? That was one of the examples of an exchange surface. We're going to have a look at that again, and then lastly we're going to have a look at calculations involving breathing rate. So let's crack straight on and have a look at a diagram. Okay, doke. So here we go. These are, of course, the lungs. Now you need to be able to recognize and name different parts of the lungs. First of all, here, okay, you have your trachea. Okay, you have the trachea, also known as the windpipe, right? So I'll put that here. That's obviously that obviously carries on going up. That's basically starts where your throat is, right? So that's the windpipe. As you go down, that section's off. I'm gonna use another color so we can see. That basically breaks off into two bronchi, right? These, oh, that's, you can't really see that much better. I'll just arrow it. So it's this here, there. That is called the, one of them is called a bronchus. Two of them are called the bronchi, right? So I'll put that in brackets. One of them is called a bronchus. Okay, one of those goes to each lung. So there's one bronchus going to one lung and another bronchus going to the other lung. Plural, they're called bronchi. They then break up into smaller tubes, okay, as you can see, and those are called bronchioles, right? Bronchioles. Okay, and that's all of those small tubes. So all of these small ones you can see, so here, 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 etc., etc. They're all called bronchioles, right? Now, I'm gonna draw down the bottom. This is completely not to scale, right? But on the end of the bronchioles, you have basically clusters of these things. I'm only drawing one of them just so you can see it on each one. These are called the alveoli, right? They are called the alveoli, okay? Singular. All right, and just for completion, I'm gonna label a couple of other things as well, because they're actually important when it comes to breathing. And so this here, you have a muscle at the bottom, okay, uh, which is called the diaphragm. Okay, that's called the diaphragm. Okay, when you breathe in, you breathe out, your diaphragm contracts and relaxes, okay? You also have, I'm not gonna draw all of them in, of course, the ribs, so, Let's do those in black. So on the outside, you have your rib cage, of course, right? So that is your ribs. And you have in between them something which is joining them. Okay, which I should really have drawn another color, but it doesn't matter. Okay, and those, um, are called your intercostal muscles. Okay, they are also extremely important in ventilation because when you breathe in and breathe out, those will contract and relax as well. Okay, so you just need to know those key parts um, of the lungs, but now we're gonna have a look specifically at these guys, right, the alveoli, and we'll have a look at gas exchange. All right, so let's have a quick look. This is a more realistic diagram of what they look like. I told you they're found in clusters, right? All of these things are alveoli, um, and obviously you can see that they have a good blood supply, right? You've got in the blue and in the red, you've got oxygen oxygenated and deoxygenated blood either flowing in or flowing out, right? Now, what happens with the alveoli is, if we go back up here, when we breathe in, uh, I'll do this in blue, right? Oxygen goes down the trachea, okay, down the bronchi, yep, yeah, or a bronchus, in the bronchioles, okay, etc., 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 and then it'll end up reaching an alveoli, 
Okay, the alveoli are where gas exchange is gonna happen, right? This is just gas moving. Gas exchange is gonna happen between the alveoli and the blood, right? That's gonna happen via diffusion because it's gonna be a higher concentration of oxygen in the alveoli and a lower concentration of oxygen in the blood. Vice versa, there's gonna be a higher concentration of CO2 in the blood, which is then gonna diffuse into the alveoli. The CO2, if I were to draw that in red, comes in and goes out of the trachea, right? Etc. etc. And so that's basically what's going to happen. As we can see, the alveoli have a very large surface area, okay, and they have a very good blood supply. This is very important because it means that they maintain a concentration gradient between the blood and the alveoli, and um, the high surface area means a high rate of diffusion. So a more simplified diagram, right, showing a single alveolus is here. So we have, as you can see, airflow coming in. You've got CO2 um, coming in from the blood, and that is going to leave, right? These colors are actually the other way from what I said previously. Okay, so the CO2 in blue here is going to leave. It's come into the alveoli by diffusion. Oxygen, as we breathed in, has come in, and that is going to be transferred to the blood via diffusion. Okay. One more important thing to notice, they haven't drawn it at all here, but the membrane okay, of both of these things, so the membrane around the alveoli is one cell thick, which means a very short diffusion pathway. That means diffusion occurs quicker. And it's the same with the capillaries, one cell thick, and so diffusion can happen very quickly. If there are much more cells, then it will take a lot longer, um, and that obviously would reduce the efficiency of our whole um, basically ventilation right it's going to reduce the efficiency of us gaining oxygen and then getting rid of waste carbon dioxide all right and by the same token we mentioned this in b1 as well what happens let's say down the line okay let's just extend this over here right and your red blood cell let's just say it's a red blood cell reaches another cell somewhere else right that needs oxygen let's say it's the liver right your liver cell let's say this is your liver cell it's terrible like that something like that Right, that needs the oxygen. And so the oxygen, drawn in red, is going to move into the liver cell by diffusion because the liver cell has probably been respiring, it's used up all its oxygen, and it's produced CO2 as a waste product. And so now there's a low concentration of oxygen, therefore concentration gradient, high to low, oxygen moves into the liver cell. On the flip side, it's produced a load of CO2 from respiration, right? That's the waste product. It doesn't want that because lots and lots of CO2 actually becomes acidic and becomes toxic. And so that's why we actually need to get rid of the CO2. And so CO2 is gonna be high concentration in the liver cell and low concentration in the red blood cell because it doesn't have CO2 at the moment. And so that is then going to diffuse the other way. Okay, and then obviously as the blood flows around the body, etc., the whole cycle repeats itself, and that is how we operate. All right, lastly, okay, you do need to know this, but it's actually very, very easy. It's something called your breathing rate. Okay, you need to be able to work out breathing rate. All right, breathing rate. Okay, it's extremely simple. All you need to do is count the number of breaths taken in a certain um in a certain time period. That time period is normally in minutes, okay? And the equation is literally number of breaths taken divided by um, number of minutes, okay, in time. That will give you your number of breaths per minute, okay? So your equation is number of breaths divided by time, okay, and that is in minutes. Okay, and that will equal breathing rate. Okay, and the units for breathing rate will therefore obviously be breaths per minute. Okay, I'll run through a very, very quick question. Okay, so let's have a look. All right, it says, Bill counted his breathing over a period of eight minutes. He counted that he had taken 96 breaths. What was his breathing rate? Okay, pause the video quickly if you would like to have a go. So I hope you were able to do that. Let's take a look. So he counted um, over eight minutes, and so that's the time period, and he counted 96 breaths. So remember, our equation was number of breaths okay, divided by 
uh, period of time in minutes and we say eight minutes right now if you do that calculation you're going to get a number of 12 obviously and that's 12 breaths right that's just bad writing sorry breaths per minute okay and that about does it for the lungs. So I hope that was helpful. If you do still have any questions on that, please feel free to uh, send me a direct email or post a comment in the box below. But as usual, please like and subscribe because it helps me out and it also is gonna notify you whenever new videos become available. But thanks very much for listening and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.